Hi everybody, this is Brendan with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're gonna to talk about torque wrenches, why they're important and how to use them. Stay tuned. Let's talk about torque wrenches. Now, torque wrench is a, a precision tool that if you're doing mechanical work, uh, engine work, cars, bikes, etc., you definitely need for your toolbox. And what a torque wrench does is allows us to tighten a bolt or a nut or a screw to a very specific tightness value or torque value. Because in order for a, a bolt or a nut to work properly in an engine or wherever it is you're working on, it has to stretch and it has to stretch a very certain amount. If it's not tight enough, it can come loose and things come apart. You tighten it too much beyond what's known as the yield strength of a bolt, you can actually break a bolt and cause other things to fail. So uh, having a very specific value and tightness value, again, a torque value that you tighten the bolt to can be very important if a part works right or fails. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant right now about torque wrenches. It is a tool you need for your toolbox. If you're gonna be doing any kind of mechanical work, whether it's on a car or a bike, you need a torque wrench because it makes sure that your work is accurate, especially when you're dealing with critical fasteners that are holding an assembly together. You know, the old, you know, hillbilly, oh, that just feels tight enough, is shooting in the dark. You know, every fastener, every nut and bolt does have a torque value. You wanna make sure you hit the nail on the head when using a torque wrench. Now, the good news about torque wrenches is the price on them have come down considerable in recent years and you can get pick up a high quality torque wrench like one of these ones we have from KT Tools uh, for a very affordable price and it'll last you a lifetime of you know, doing any kind of service work or mechanic work that you want to get into. You know, I know myself, uh, I would not trust any person that calls himself a mechanic if they didn't have a, a good torque wrench in their toolbox because again it's just guessing at that point and you and a lot of the stuff we don't have that room to guess we've got to make sure it's right now let us talk a minute about styles of torque wrenches and there's a lot of different kinds that have been on the market over the years and we have two examples here of the most common uh, types you run into uh, this is an old really old torque wrench uh, this is called a bender torque wrench or sometimes called a beam wrench and it literally flexes we have a scale here on uh, to read and the wrench as you tighten the, the fastener it literally bends and flexes and based on how much the wrench bends or flexes will give you your torque value. Uh, these have been around for a long time. I don't see them so much anymore but uh, they do work. Their accuracy is kind of on the, the least accurate of the wrenches but they are the most affordable of the wrenches uh, if you need to go that route. They also take a little bit more practice to use uh, because this handle floats a little bit and you have to be able to keep it perfectly in the middle there to use it because that little fulcrum point is the torque point. Uh, again, not so common these days. The most common type of torque wrench is one of these, uh, which is called a click style torque wrench. And on these wrenches, you actually set the torque value by adjusting the handle here. We'll do that in a minute. And the wrench will basically click when you've reached a certain torque value as you pull the wrench. You'll see it more on demonstration, but this is probably the most common type of wrench on the market now. Uh, there's digital versions of them. There's ones that have big old like round scales on them. But for most of us, this is what we need to cover uh, the bases. Now beyond the styles of torque wrenches that are out there, we also need to talk about the scales on the torque wrenches or what the torque wrenches are calibrated for. A uh, good example on, on this particular you know, KT Pro wrench, it is calibrated for foot pounds. Uh, which is going to be very common here in the U.S. Uh, a lot of times you'll have uh, metric values, which will be in newton meters, and sometimes you have to convert between newton meters and foot pounds, depending on what type of uh, fashion you're working on. Now, if you get to a, no, there is kind of a floor for foot pounds on torque wrenches, and if you have to do some smaller fasteners, we have a smaller torque wrench that happens to read in inch pounds and uh, you know 12 inch pounds equals one foot pound so if you have to torque something that's a smaller uh, physical bolt you can do the math and make the conversion and use a smaller wrench for level of accuracy myself i have two wrenches i have a small inch pound wrench and i have a foot pound wrench to be able to cover all of my bases 
on anything I'm working on. But bare minimum, something like, uh, like a foot-pound torque wrench that has a fairly low uh, floor on it. I believe this one is like 15 foot-pounds is the lowest. It's a good starting point uh, for a torque wrench right there. Let's look at some of the details of the click style uh, torque wrenches. And I have two different brands in front of me. Uh, they, they work basically the same, but there's a couple of details that are different. So right here I have one of our KT Pro so that are in inch pounds. So it's a smaller range setting. And this is the lock. So as you go to change the adjustment on the torque wrench, you have to pull that lock down for your settings there. It's again, that style of doing it. Every wrench is a little different. That's kind of nice because you can adjust it quick. On this wrench, it's a bit more old school where the lock is at the, the base here. Usually this right here, you have to unlock it, move it, and then lock it that way. So this is open all the way, unlocked, and I can turn the handle. And as I turn the handle up, it increases my uh, torque setting of the wrench. But let's talk about the details of the scale right here, because this is where all our information is. The most important thing to understand is the center line here. This is kind of our zero line where we're always going to make our adjustments towards. It's like 12 o'clock on a on an analog clock. And then on the sides here, we have the different torque range, uh, torque ranges that this wrench will work to. On the lowest, this is a 10 pound, and at the highest, it's 150 pounds. So this wrench is working ranges between 10 and 150 foot pounds. If you need to go beyond 150, you need a bigger torque wrench. If you need to go below 10, you need a smaller torque wrench. So you have to keep in mind the, the torque setting uh, value that you're working with and what you're torquing and you know, how big of a wrench do you need for that. Now, like, between all these settings here, they have a little line that kind of jogs down to the center line. Well, that indicates where our adjustment is made in coordination with um, these numbers here on the handle. And as I turn this handle clockwise, the numbers start to increase in increments of one foot pound. So right now we're at zero. And if I turn the wrench to about here, for example, my zero is lined up at the center line and is lined up with the 10 that jogged down. Let me back that off of here so you can see that. So that would be 10 foot pounds right there. We'll do our first reading at 20. So again, we're gonna turn the wrench, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So our 20 is showing, the jog line comes down and my zero is lined up with my center line. So that would be 20 foot pounds. And then I would lock the wrench in the back here. So the handle doesn't move now. And then I would go ahead and apply the torque wrench to the, the fastener that I was um, tightening. You gotta do it in stage. If you're doing something in stages, you might have to do two or three torque settings. So in this case, we started off with the 20 and we're gonna bump it up to 32 for our next torque um, setting. So I'm gonna unlock the wrench, turn the handle up to 32. So there's another 10 right there, 30, one, Two. That's 32 right there. Rock the handle nice and tight. And that way the wrench is now set to 32 foot pounds. And once you're done with the wrench, uh, you have to unload it, which is you know taking the stress off the spring that's in here for the torque settings. This one's nice and it says store at lowest settings. Most wrenches don't say that, it's always implied. So again, when you're done with the wrench at the end of the day, unlock it and make sure you back that off all the way and unload it. So you don't store it under tension. Now that you know how to set the torque wrench, we're gonna actually use it in application here. We're gonna do a couple different examples on this Honda 350. And let's do this uh, front axle holder. This is a very critical part that a lot of people don't realize need to be done with a torque wrench. Went ahead and got out my service manual and it has all the different bolts and sizes on it with the torque values. And this one, it happens to be in uh, foot pounds and in kilogram meters again more different scales. We're gonna use the foot pounds and for front fork Under axle under holder. We're looking at 19.5 to 23.8 foot pounds So let's set our torque wrench to let's say 21 22 foot pounds. We'll say 22 foot pounds for this exercise 21 22 In case y'all don't know, on the, the front axle holders, you always do the front first, because it's the one that touches, and the back one has the gap, because they're different heights. So I'm just gonna bring these up. I'm gonna get that first one torqued, because I want those two faces to touch. And with the regular ratchet, I'm just gonna take the slack out of it. All right, I'm not pushing very hard, just enough to feel it stop. 
cool. Ratchet off, go to my torque wrench. And we're gonna have a torque value. Now what's important with this is I'm gonna keep some square pressure on the end of the head and I'm gonna swing the wrench and I want the wrench to click and you'll hear the click while I'm in motion. So let's just do it and let's see if we get it. I'm holding the handle squarely on the rubber handle here and let's go. Right there. And the wrench clicks. That's when it hits your torque value. Stop. We'll do the same thing on this one. All right, here we go. All right, torque is set. We're gonna do this lower triple tree uh, mounting clamp bolt. The torque value in the manual is a 13 to 18 foot pounds. So let's go 16 on the wrench. 16. I hope I have enough swing here with the head of the wrench. Okay. I'm not getting much resistance yet, so there we go. Out of throw, let's reset. Cool, I'm glad this happened. We had an error. Check out. Like, I reset the wrench, I went to go make another throw, and the wrench clicked before the bolt started moving. So that means my torque setting isn't really accurate on the bolt. The wrench wants to click, you need to have the wrench click while the wrench is in motion, so we're gonna reset this one and try it again. We don't like to do the start-stop. Ideally, you wanna have the longest swing you can with the wrench before you run into something. All right, here we go, let's try it again. There it goes. See how the, it happened during the swing? That's where we stop, versus me stopping, resetting the ratchet, and then clicking. Because what's happening is if, it, if the wrench does that, you reset it and it clicks before you start moving, uh, the coefficient of friction in the bolts is greater than the torque value. So, you know, you're not getting an accurate torque reading. So you always want it to happen while the wrench is in motion. Another place where uh, torque values are extremely important uh, has to do with the actual engine part assembly. Uh, probably the biggest and most important one in the engine is gonna be the head gasket torque or the head bolt torque. And on this 350 here, uh, we actually have, uh, it has nuts, not bolts, but it has eight of them that run across the top of this uh, valve cover and sandwiches the whole thing together. So uh, all eight of these have a torque value to them, but because there are multiple fasteners, they're all working together to keep them on the top end of the engine uh, assembled, uh, there's a slightly different approach on torquing this stuff. And we're gonna have another video uh, that goes along with this. Check out a link up in the top corner. And we're gonna talk about torquing multiple bolts on an assembly in sequence at multiple torque stage values. I hope this video has given you a little more insight into the importance of torque wrenches, how they're used, and moreover, why you need one in your toolbox if you're doing any kind of mechanical work, whether it's on motorcycles, cars, boats, airplanes. You need torque wrenches for precision torque values on fasteners. As you saw in the manual, all those numbers are published right in front of you. So even the manufacturers say, hey, this is how it goes together. With that, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via the website. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. Make sure you ring the bell for notifications and we will see you next time.